Hello everybody, welcome to another featherweight video. So this time um, I'm going to be doing a machine for a customer who's very excited. And I'm excited about this one because I'm going to be doing something new to me. And it's going to be a color morphing paint. And so she uh, purchased the paint and had it shipped. And um, I'm opening the box right now. I haven't looked at it yet. It looks like she has the purple green finish color morphing paint, Krylon. And um, then there is a black base coat that goes with it. So these cans are smaller. It's an eight ounce can, but you know, it's a small machine, so we should be good. So right now she is stripped. Um, her, I have all of her other parts on my, in a box on my other table. Um, what I need to do though is go through and do some finishing touches. You can see there's a little bit of stuff here I need to, to deal with and then mask her up for painting. Um, and I'll be doing that. I'll show you what she looks like. I will be using a uh, where do I have it? I don't have it on my table here. It's a self-etching primer for the aluminum machines. I use self-etching primer first. Once that self-etching primer is on and it is dry to the touch, I'll come back with one of my light sanding sponges. You know, this is, it doesn't say, but this is like a 2000 grit and it seems to work really well to give it a nice life light rub over with that and then come back with a microfiber towel get off any of the dust make it completely smooth and then we'll hit her with a coat of the base coat let that tack up and then we will go with the color morphing so i'm excited about it I haven't tried it before there's different brands of this stuff out there um i've used the uh, Rust-Oleum Color Morph over black. I did that over a um, black Godzilla a long time ago, and it was kind of cool. It wasn't really dramatic, though, and it might be because I didn't put enough of it, and it might be because it's a, uh, a, a Godzilla has that really matte textured finish. Usually, the caps indicate the final look, okay? And this cap looks very dark to me. Sometimes when you're looking at color morphing things online, they're like really, really bright purple and things like that. This looks more like black with a secret. You know what I mean? But it, you can see some shine to it and it does look greenish and it does look purplish. So that's what we're gonna go for. Um, I was planning on putting some decals on here, but now that I see how dark these these are, I'm wondering if my decal pattern that I had planned are even going to show up. I was thinking that the paint would be lighter, like this color. So we'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. If it turns out that it's this light and not that dark, the decals will work great. So onward and upward. I want to show you, um, I learned so much from the comments, you know, and someone suggested using uh, these, the little shrink tubings that I use for electrical, that they're great for um, masking. And look, the tiny little guy here, I can just slide it right over this little wire that does not want to come off very easily. So I can just kind of push it on there and then that's going to mask up that little thread guide and I don't need to worry about it. I do the same thing over the little uh, spool spoke on top of the little plate that goes up here. Slide one of these over it and uh, yeah, they work great. Another tip I picked up from reading comments, all of you intelligent people, um, after I blasted her, there's always, you know, a cleaning process after that, getting residual dust out from inside. And someone suggested cleaning, this was actually on one of Jen's videos, cleaning them with kerosene. Um, just have a bucket of kerosene. So I have a gallon of kerosene, I have a bucket, and what I've done is just put her over the bucket. And I've done this for like the last three featherweights I did. I wanted to make sure it all is good before I relay it on. but. 
by letting that kerosene flow through, any residual dust on the internals, you know, gets flushed out, and then I hit it with a high pressure air afterwards. And it makes everything, you know, still, well, she's masked up, so can't tell right now, but it cleans out everything so all the gears are really good. There's no worry about rust issues or anything like that. And um, that works fabulous too. So thank you for those hints. Always learning, aren't we? So let me go ahead and keep masking up. Um, one thing I do like to use is plastic grocery bags. They work great for cramming into small places and you know blocking little holes and things like that and then I put a piece of tape over it to keep it you know nice and neat so I'm going to mask over this bearing and everything but the grocery bag is going to keep a lot of the stuff from like this direction and this direction and everything so I am also going to uh, fold up a piece of masking tape and put it in this slot but what I, what I suggest, and what I'm going to do is I'm not doing that first. I'm going to give her her primer coat first, okay, because I don't want to leave this just bare metal exposed. So I'll get that on, and that self-etching primer is extremely thin. It's not going to cause any issues. But once the primer is on, then I can mask that up so it won't be bare metal. And, you know, even if you want to just put one coat of paint on there, you can. Um, but then I'll mask it up because I need to make sure that this is, is really well masked, especially before my clear coat, because my clear coat is pretty thick and uh, you need the clearance there. Everywhere that needs a tight clearance, like right here, this side is gonna get masked up because you know that plate's gonna fit on there really snugly. Um, all these little bearings and everything will be closed up. So yeah, lots to do, but it's a process. And I mentioned Jen's channel. I don't think I noted that um, this is one of the machines that I am working on with her. She does the disassembly and reassembly, and I do the paint. So once I am done painting her up, then this machine goes back to Jen, and she puts it back together. So she is my guru for all things featherweight. I just paint. I just paint these guys. I love to do machines, but... Um, there's a lot of electrical that I just don't want to get my, my big old hands inside of there to have to deal with that, and she's good with that, so that's how that partnership works. Um, for all of the little holes, I will be using little silicone plugs. I actually have a new order that should be here soon because I'm using them over and over and over so these little plugs you know i can pull off the previous paint there they will go into the holes so that uh, paint will get in there you know all over the place there's all different size holes all different size plugs so that's how that's going to work all right one more thing i wanted to point out um sometimes there are imperfections in the casting so see this that is the metal that is just messed up. It's got a funky texture and everything. I'm not going to try to grind it down because I, you know, that's the nature of the machine. But it's important when I'm masking and everything that I look really, really closely at the machines because sometimes I don't notice things like this beforehand and then it'll show up when the paint is on. And then I go crazy trying to figure out what it was with the paint that made it do that. Whereas, you know, keeping an eye on it ahead of time, I can say, oh, okay, well, that's just the way the metal is and go on with my day. You know, but that does happen. That does happen. Sometimes there's imperfections up here, sometimes on other places. So, you know, just being aware. Okay, so I wanna show you on my test spot here. Um, the base coat one, the, the blackish one, it looks like just a interesting black spray paint. And I have it up on my tester there. And I can't show you on the machine because I got so excited that I went ahead and painted everything on it. So here's the situation. Um, the black base coat makes it a darker color morph. But 
Then the other one that you put on top is basically a clear. When I sprayed it on my um, tester piece over there, it looked clear. But when you put it over the black color morph paint base coat, then you get this. And from one angle, it's going to look emerald green. You know, it is dark and mysterious. And I was thinking, well, it's just green. But then I was over in my doorway and I looked back at the machine and it was purple. So it's definitely doing its thing. It's just based on your perspective. So I don't know if I can use this phone and show you and everything, but trust me, it is changing colors. You know, over here I'm green, over here I'm purple. Uh, down here I have my wheel. If you can see, it's kind of changing. So anyhow, I'm very pleased. I am putting my heater back on for overnight. Going to let this harden up, give it a couple days, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to do the decals. Uh, the decal that we had set up for this was a black decal. And at first I was thinking that this was going to be too dark to use with it, but... I don't think so now. I think it's going to be subtle and it's really cool. It's like a, a Celtic dragon. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show this to you really quick. Sorry I didn't show you the mid stage. The mid stage honestly just looked black. But this is the self etching primer, the black morph base coat, and three coats of the purple green color morphing paint. Okay, so let me let it dry overnight and we'll see what she looks like uh, in the morning. Okay, I know it's been a while since I recorded anything and I've got her done. I want to explain a couple things because this is the first time I use this brand of paint. Um, first of all, the base coat, it's really, really important with that black base coat that you get a really good coverage because if you put it on somewhat lightly, you're just going to have to come back and do it again because the color changing paint will not do anything. It'll look invisible. So you need to have that um, black base coat. I just have this set down and it's at a slightly different angle. So you can see at this angle, it looks green. <clears throat> Up there at that angle, it looks purple, which is pretty neat. Um, I talk to her owner and we decided that instead of the black decals we did gold foil and so what I ended up doing is getting a specialty gold foil um, from a sign company and then cutting out the corner pieces and the dragon putting those pieces onto a water slide decal cutting that out and then actually applying it to the machine with the water slide decal, you know, sliding off the backing like that. And that worked pretty well. Um, after that, I put three coats of a really good clear coat over it. And so, you know, it's very shiny and lovely. So I just wanted to point all that out. It's a very different machine. The color morph, it's dark, but um, I'm not sure how well it's carrying over onto the camera, but you can definitely see the color change. There were some imperfections in the metal on the casting on the main machine part, but you know what? I think that that's fine. When you really look hard, you can kind of see it in the paint, but thats it's just the way it is, you know, but that's okay. So anyhow, I hope you liked it. I hope you like her, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.